consider, says Screwtape, how we can retrieve this disaster. The grave thing is to prevent his doing anything. As long as he does not convert it into action, it does not matter how much he thinks about this new repentance, referring to this man. Let the little brute wallow in it. And here there is an inside joke Lewis puts in. Let him, if he has any bent that way, write a book about it, because he's referring to people who write a lot of books, including himself. Let him write a book about it. That's an often an excellent way of sterilizing the seeds which the enemy, that would be God, plants in the human soul. Let him do anything but act on it. No amount of piety in the imagination and affections will harm us, Screwtape says, if we can keep it out of his will. As one of the humans has said, and here Lewis is quoting G.K. Chesterton, quote, active habits are strengthened by repetition, the passive ones are weakened. The more often he feels without acting, the less he will ever be able to act. And in the long run, the less he will be able to feel how the unforgivable sin creeps up on us. There is a gap. There is a lag time between hearing and doing, hearing and repenting, hearing and actually making a move in which we put our weight down and trust in God's faithfulness and trust in His truth. Lewis saw that. Our Lord preserves that in this remarkable parable. There's also a lag time between hearing God's love and experiencing it personally as God's grace. And that fact is what the vineyard really is all about. You know, as a pastor for 46 years now, I've heard people all the time talk about God's love in theory. They know in theory about God's faith, faithfulness, but it's not really a part of their experience. You see, there has to be that time when those truths out there, which are true, whether we embrace them or not, become our truth. One of the great verses in the Bible is in the book of Revelation. Our Lord speaks to the Laodicean church and he says, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will sit with him and he with me. What a tremendous promise of grace. But do you hear the lag time in it? He doesn't say, get ready, I'm going to kick the door down. Jesus preserves our freedom. He says, I'm going to come to the door of your heart and I'm going to knock. And there'll be a time when you hear that knock. And you decide to come to the door and you recognize who's there and you open it. Karl Barth, in explaining the theology of the Holy Spirit, put it this way. He said, you know that you are assured, you know that you are assured of the Holy Spirit when you're able to say that God's love is not only a general truth, which it is, God's love is a truth and and it is the truth, whether you feel it or not, it's there whether you know it or not. But Barth then goes on to say, when God's love is not just a general truth, but you're able to say, it's also for me. It's the Holy Spirit who has assured you of that. The Holy Spirit who has closed that gap so that I know it's also my truth. 
Do you know that this morning? Do you have that assurance of salvation? It's okay to struggle with that. But once you know, come to the vineyard. Come to the kingdom. The parable shows that the lag time in the long run favors the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our Lord himself preserves this, so he's not worried about it. He's so sure of himself, he's willing to take time with you. I've often said to parents, you know, the story's not over. So often parents say, oh, I don't know what's going to happen with my child. I don't know what. They're not attending church. They're not listening to the gospel. They're doing this. They're doing that. The key to parenting is knowing how to stay close. And then also to step back. Sometimes you have to step back in a person's life and let that person have their own journey. And you have to sometimes just pray and try to be a reference point. But you can't barge in. You have to let each son, each daughter, each friend have their own experience of God's truth and grace. Jesus did it. He set the stage for us because his truth, his faithfulness, his grace wears well. It wears well through the afternoon. It wears well into the evening. There are those who say, yes, I'll follow you, but when they count the cost, they fall away. There are those who know all the words and all the slogans and all the verses, but it isn't theirs because they haven't embraced the Savior who is the incarnation of that truth. Jesus is confident that the Holy Spirit perseveres in pursuing us. He is willing to shepherd us through that gap, that time, so that we can move from hearing to doing. First son, he was a problem with breakfast, but he was a joy at supper. Second son was a joy at breakfast, but a disappointment at supper. This life is breakfast. There will be a great supper, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And when we all get to heaven, that's going to be supper. Indeed, will we please God? Or will we disappoint him? What do you think, Jesus asked. At the end of the parable, he asked again the second part of that question, which of the two did the will of the Father? They answered, first, Heavenly Father, help us to wrestle with what's keeping us from you. Help us to know it's okay to struggle in your presence, to not just tell you what we think you want to hear, but to tell you where we really are. And with your love and your grace and your spirit, bring us to where we need to be, in the vineyard, in the kingdom with you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.